Okay, so welcome back. Um, and we're going close to the end of the programme for State of the Map 2020, but something a little bit different this year and exciting is the Open Street Map quiz. So I'm going to hand over to Ilya to explain that. So hello, uh, hello everyone. I'm Elias Verev, and this is like the last talk of the conference almost. So, opposition map quiz. Uh, we uh, decided what to do. So, you will have like several interesting trivia questions about stuff that you didn't know about OpenStreetMap or did know, but uh, not quite sure. And the idea is that uh, you try to answer as many questions as possible. So what do you do now? Right now, you go to this website, myquiz.com. Let me show you it a bit closer. So you see it. Uh, here, you go to myquiz.com right now on your phones, on your web browser, on whatever. And you enter these these six numbers in the quiz number field. So do do that. Like go to myquiz.org. Dot org. Sorry, it's myquiz.org. And enter these numbers. Uh, while you're doing that, I will tell you what what will happen. So there will be like twenty four questions. For each question, you will have 50 seconds to answer. I think that's plenty of time. I will read each question out loud. Uh, when you uh, answer a question, you'll wait till everyone answers. And then there will be 20 seconds when I explain the correct answer. So 50 seconds per question, 20 per answer. Uh, if you choose correctly, you win some points. Uh, when, uh, uh, when multiple people answer, uh, no, let's me, let me start from, from the end. So when we get to the end of the quiz, uh, if there are multiple people with the same score, whoever fastest wins. So it benefits also to answer fast. Uh, one rule, don't Google, like, please. Like half of these questions can be answered easily by Googling, but uh, it's just not great. Please don't do that. Uh, and yeah, all you had, have to do now is connect to myquiz.org and click the button and we will start like in when we have at least 50 users i guess so <laughs> go on connect uh we have like several seconds left to start the quiz uh i yeah I will be sharing this screen for a bit, but uh, in the process, I will return to myself and you will see uh, the questions on the screen behind me, I hope. <laughs> okay, we've got 48 users. That's really cool. We can do with some more. <laughs> uh, go to myquiz.org and type in that number and type in your nickname if you can or your name or whatever. Uh, okay, two users more. And yeah, we got 50 users. So now you'll be competing, solving all these questions. So let's start the game. You can still join, I guess, uh, but I, I'm, I'm not really sure. So 51, let's wait one minute more. If you're thinking of joining or not joining, just go to mikewiz.org, like right now, 
and enter these six numbers because I'm not sure you can join after that. Uh, we got half a minute left. Myquiz.org, that's one thing you need to remember. Uh, questions will be very hard, like I spent all day <laughs> coming up with them. Uh, 54 users, that's really cool. Uh, do join right now. And, uh, okay, one more user, and we're starting the game. And come on, come on. <laughs> Okay, I think everyone's here. So let's start. So which of these cities hosted an international uh, state of the map conference? Karlsruhe, Denver, London, or Toronto? And that's obviously Denver. Well, <laughs> for some reason, uh, London is also counted as okay, which is weird. So uh, Denver hosted it in 2011, and everybody, other cities didn't. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so how many lo non-local state of the maps they have been in Africa? Two, three, four, or five. And this is really weird, but correct answer is three. There had been state of the map Africa in 2015, 17, and 19. And there might have been an international conference in Africa this year, but alas, there have been years. But if there was international conference, what, uh, where would ha have it been? What it would be the venue? Uh, Techno park, river club, university, or breakwater campus? And the correct answer is University of Cape Town. Uh, well. You should know if you read the bid and uh, state of the maps are usually, usually happen in universities. So uh, sponsors, the only company to ever sponsor state of the map conference and tax tungsten carbide level was Mapbox, Cloudmate, Esri or MapQuest. This is like the super level invented specifically for this company. And some of you, very few of you know that it was MapQuest and it was really long time ago in 2011 in Denver. They asked to make a special like level for them. Now we're switching to project history. And the simple thing most of you know, when is the official birthday of OpenStreetMap? It's in August. Everyone knows it, but it's, is it 5th, 9th, 12th, or 16th? Forty-eight answers. Awesome. Yeah. Most of you know it's 9th of August, but it's almost always floating because of weekdays. And each of these dates means something. Like 12th is first commit to SVN, 9th is domain registration. Uh, 16th is website. So it's April 2009. You have been happily contributing to OpenStreetMap for years, but suddenly the website won't let you upload edits anymore. What do you need to do? Agree to license change, disable anonymous editing, or become member of OSMF. Okay, it doesn't work. So you had to disable anonymous editing because that's what has changed in April 2009. The OSM API, we have currently version 0.6, but what introduced version 
ways, change sets, segments, or relations. So it were relations, and a lot of you know that. And ways have been introduced in point three, and change set introduced in point six. And segments were, well, they were removed in API point five. So who did not write a book on OpenStreetMap? Is it Steve Cost, Frederick Ram, Michael Maron, or Jonathan Bennett? There are actually three books on OpenStreetMap in total. And uh, most of you know that Michael Maron did not write a book. What's interesting thing is, is that uh, two books were written like more than 10 years ago, and one book is just interviews. So there is no current book on OpenStreetMap for technical people. According to a recent publication by US IT consulting firm, the total value of OpenStreetMap is approximately uh, 350 million US, one and a half, four or seven. Oh, I see lots of you have read the article. Yes, exactly. It's 1.5 billion US dollars, which we think is pretty low because uh, some countries cannot be met with that money if you pay everyone for the job. OpenStreetMap board. Who of these women did serve on the SMF board first? Like who was the first of them? Kathleen Danielson, Heather Lesson, Kate Chapman, or Emily LaFray. And actually it was Emily, but it would have been Kate Chapman as well if she won the first election. Emily uh, served in 2010 and Kate also stood for election that year, but uh, become board member only in 2013. Where is the first node currently? It has been jumping a lot. So is it on Greenwich Prime Meridian? Or is it a tree? Or a radio tower? Or a restaurant? And if you opened, you would know that it's, it's radio tower in central Italy. But recently, it had been a memorial in, on Greenwich Prime Meridian, which is actually not there. And for a long time, it was a tree in Peter's backyard. So all these four options, they were node number one. Which is the largest proper building in OpenStreetMap? Is it Lada Car Factory in Russia, Boeing Everett Factory in the US, pictured, General Motors Car Factory, or just a country border with a building equals yes? And the biggest building is actually a ladder car factory in the Russia because it has size of almost one square kilometer. Uh, General Motors comes close second, and Everett Factory is actually not the in largest buildings at all. Which of these popular public transport values, like tags, public transport equals what are least used? All these values are popular but which is least used? Stop area group, station, pole, or stop? And it is actually stop. And it's, I know that's not like hard to understand. There is no this tag actually in the schema. So yeah, most of you chose stop area group. It's used uh, quite a lot, uh, 5,000 and so on. What are these lines in the Atlantic Ocean? Are they, this is a picture from OSM inspector. Uh, are these GPS traces from regatta or deep sea cables or ferry lines? What, what are they? Yeah, most of you know, it's really deep sea cables. And congratulations to Nakainer for being the first now and to Claire de Lune second and Daniel third. Uh, yeah. It's really great.
So yeah, there's a lot going in the ocean. In January this year, an edit was reverted that has added names to over a thousand countries. These names were in which language? Esperanto, Klingon, Emoji, or Hexadecimal. Uh, this one was, was fun because it's emoji. Uh, we have names in Esperanto and they were not reverted. That's a proper language. And I'm not really sure about Klingon. There's a possibility. <laughs> it's also in OpenStreetMap, but emoji is not a language. So our website, how is called the code, the transit? Is it the whale, the rail sport, the spaghetti dish, or the Rubicon? I guess most of you know this. It's uh, the rail sport. Like two thirds of you know what it is. And I see the list of winners like shuffles <laughs> itself quite a lot. Um, so the next in technology, which of these editors were recently awarded a micro grant for improvements? Is it Potlatch 2? Is it Vespucci Street Complete or 360 editor for editing the same using panoramas? All four of them applied for micro grants. And yeah, Street Complete actually won it. But obviously we would benefit from either of them. Uh, because this year Flash is plugins are going to be disabled and Potlatch will cease to be. Which of these is not a renderer? Is it Osmo Render, Mapnik, Maputnik, or Cosmos? Three of these are renderers and one isn't. And a lot of you know it's Maputnik. It's an editor of map style, but not a renderer. Cosmos is what became of Maperative. It's uh, also render, and you know Osmo render and Mapnik, obviously. And follow-up question about Osmo render. In which language Osmo render was written? So there are Python, Ruby, Perl, or XML. And this is really funny because it has been written in XML precisely an XSLT. Basically, it's a rule that converts uh, OSM XML file into SVG XML file. It was very weird, and I guess it won't work with current amount of data. How precise OpenStreetMap can be? Like, how precise can you map things? Is it up to one millimeter, one centimeter, half a meter, or two to five meters? And yeah, you should have chosen like the maximum precisions, precision of one millimeter, because uh, coordinates have uh, seven decimal digits and that's one millimeter. If it was six, it will be centimeter. And half a meter is usually a precision of imagery that you have. Under which license OSM tiles are currently published? Is it uh, CC by SA20, CC by 40? ODBL, or there is no specific license. There was a OSM blog post recently about that, and it told that from 1st of July, there will be no specific license on OSM tiles. Uh, it's published under ODBL produced work uh, terms that are implied by the opposite map data used to do it. But yeah, there are no specific license for tiles. Uh, numbers game. What was the re record for daily mappers recently? Again, this was in the blog. It, it was 6,000, 7,000, or 5,000. And yeah, given this OpenStreetMap, you should have chosen like the biggest number there is. <laughs> it was 7,200. And uh, 
uh, Pascal did, nice, did some research and found out that many people are mapping in Peru and Botswana in South Africa. So Africa again for the win. <laughs> Who invented craft mappers? I got craft mapper t-shirt, so I couldn't not ask. Was it Frederick, Michael, Ben, or Rob? And this term, craft mappers, come from article by Michael Megurski in 2016 uh, called OpenStreetMap, Robots, Crisis, and Craft Mappers. When he told that basically craft mappers are why OpenStreetMap is not progressing. Who published the article in HotOSM blog, Why Women in Mapping Matter? Is it Nathalie, Hava Adinani, Trudy Nimitala, or Laura Mugeha? And it was Trudy. Uh, she published this article like two years ago, and it is pretty fun. And by, by now, I believe everyone must know that re representation on the map matters. It's basically half of the talks on this conference were about representation. So the quiz is over and congratulations to Nekaner for the first place and to Michael for close second and to Rory for the third. Well, it, it's weird. I think everyone is from Eastern Europe and there's Sarah and MXN. So I hope this has been uh, interesting uh, and you have fun. So thank you. And I'll pass in the word to Gregory. Thank you, Ilya. That was fun. I'm a bit worried about some of my answers. I think the speed struggled and I was 16th place. Um, <laughs> so I think we're just going to pause for a few seconds and then we'll... Um, We'll be back with the closing session and a few exciting things and some special news I've got. But um, we'll just take a pause for a few seconds as we uh, work out who will be here for your closing session.